Good evening and welcome to the 2024 State of the City. So as you saw in that video, Santa Monica is a pretty special place. My name is Lana Negretti. I currently serve as Vice Mayor on the Santa Monica City Council. I'm also a mother, a renter, and business owner in this beautiful city we all get to call home. I'm very excited to be here and welcome all of you tonight to hear from Mayor Phil Brock and our city manager, David White, about our city's outstanding accomplishments this past year and our vision for the future. I wanna start by giving a big thank you to the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District, Superintendent Antonio Shelton and John Adams Middle School Principal Martha Chacon for graciously hosting us tonight at this amazing venue. And let's give a big round of applause for the talented youth performers from the Jams Wind Ensemble who treated us to some beautiful music as we arrived and got to mingle. Thank you, Jams Director of Instrumental Music, Angela Wu, and Director Sean Garnreiter for coordinating. I would now like to take a moment to call out the elected officials, um, city and community leaders who have joined us tonight. Please hold your applause to the end. That's a test. I have a long list here. And I'm actually looking for that list, but, oh, here it is, okay. Um, Senator Ben Allen. So, oh, see, nobody listens. <laughs> <laughs> Assembly member Rick Chavez Zaber, Board of Equalization Chair and former Santa Monica Council member Tony Vasquez, Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District Board President Jennifer Smith, Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District Board member Maria Leon Vasquez, Santa Monica College District Board Trustee Vice Chair Nancy Greenstein, Santa Monica College District Board Trustee Dr. Susan Amanoff. Santa Monica College District Board Trustee Barry Snell, Santa Monica College President Dr. Catherine Jeffrey, Santa Monica Rent Control Board Chair Erica Leslie, Santa Monica Rent Control Board Member Anastasia Foster, West Hollywood Mayor John Erickson, thank you for beating the traffic and coming down here, Aurelia Friedman from the Office of Congress Member Ted Liu, and I'd also like to welcome all of our city's former mayors and city council members. If you could please stand and be acknowledged. I think I saw tonight former Mayor Judy Abdo, former Mayor Sue Himmelrich, former Mayor Ted Winner, and former council member Greg Morano. I'd also like to acknowledge my colleagues, Christine Parra and Oscar De La Torre, who are sitting in the front here. And I don't know if I saw Gleam Davis, Carolyn Trosas, or Jesse Zwick, but if they are here, um, we welcome them as well. And let's give a big, um, oh, sorry, that was my last page. <laughs> um, okay. Oh my gosh. I'm gonna tell you a joke in the meantime. Um, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, I'm now really thrilled to introduce a very talented student in our district, Valentina Monco, a senior at Samo High and a member of the Samo High Choir to perform our national anthem. So if you could all please stand as we welcome Valentina to the stage. Oh, say. Can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bones bursting in air gave Oh, save us that's 
star-spangled banner yet wave. O'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Wow, thank you for that beautiful rendition. If Valentina and the youth, the young musicians you saw out front aren't a testament to our amazing embrace of music, culture, and the arts in our district, I don't know what is. It is now my pleasure to lead us into tonight's main event. I have the great honor of introducing Santa Monica Mayor Phil Brock. Mayor Brock has been a leader in our community for many years. He has served on the city council since 2020, but began his tenure long before that. Having served on the Parks and Recreation Commission, the Arts Commission, and the Santa Monica Civic Working Group. Since joining the council, Mayor Brock has advocated for the city at the regional, state, and national level, making sure Santa Monica's voice is heard on key issues affecting our community. You might remember him from Brock on Your Block, and now, currently, Brock on the Clock. My last name only rhymes with spaghetti, so we haven't really come up with anything yet. Um, and in his first two months as our mayor, he has worked to bring the city council together to tackle the challenges and celebrate the triumphs we face. So without further ado, it is my pleasure to introduce our mayor, Phil Brock. Thank you, Lana. Hold on a minute. Where's my speech? That may not be my speech. Yes, it is. It would help if I knew where my speech was. So welcome, everyone. Thank you for being here. I want to thank all of you for being here. My vice mayor, Lana, your vice mayor, Lana Negretti, has done a wonderful job. She's a native of Santa Monica. Please give her a hand of applause. I have two other council members here, my partners, and uh, Oscar De La Torre, like Lana, like me, are, is a native of the city. Can you stand, please? <laughs> and council member Christine Parra. Now, she's not a native of the city, I'm sorry to say, but her mother and I graduated from Samuel High together and she's lived here and been here between Culver City and here all her life. Christine, can you stand, please? So on behalf of myself and all my colleagues on the City Council, I want to thank you for your interest in staying informed about what's happening in the community we call home. I also want to thank the members of our boards and commissions, many of whom have joined us tonight. If you're on a city board or commission, can you please stand and be recognized? Stand, please. Please give all of them a hand. They volunteer to help all of you. They are the grassroots of our city council. They're the people who give us advice, counsel, and bring forward great initiatives. A special thank you to the chairs and vice chairs who have joined my mayor's cabinet and are also here tonight to give further advice to our city council. Your thoughtful consideration and recommendations you provide at our meetings are essential to the work of the council. We appreciate you and your service to our community. I also want to give a shout out, a large shout out, to the chairs and members of our vibrant neighborhood associations. I want to give you an example about a Santa Monican who never gave up on his dreams for the city. 
the man I'm referring to in our city brought Martin Luther King Jr. to the historic Santa Monica Civic Auditorium to speak. He became our city's first black recreation and parks commissioner against all odds. He fought in the 1970s to raise funds and acquire land for a special park. City Council said they would never put a park in the Pico neighborhood. And this man would never take no for an answer. He fought for 25 years to add more land and facilities to the place that's now called Virginia Avenue Park. He made, in the words of our great Congress member, John Lewis, good trouble. I intend to bring forward legislation that would, will honor this gentleman who's here with us tonight. He's now 102 years old, and he hasn't stopped making good trouble. We want to change the name, and I'm going to pursue legislation to change the name of Virginia Avenue Park to Lloyd Allen Park. Ladies and gentlemen, it is such an honor to have with us tonight Mr. Lloyd Allen and his family. Lloyd, if you can, can you rise and accept the, the handshake? Lloyd is an inspiration. Hundred and two years old. You know, my mom just turned 96 last Friday. I'm going to use Lloyd as an example <laughs> that she has a ways to go. Aha. Uh -huh. Both of our speeches got mixed up, Lana. All right. Uh, and I also want to recognize uh, Valentina, who did the national anthem a few minutes ago. Her rendition was fabulous. And maybe I'll get a speech together. Here we go. So, sorry about that. I asked for a teleprompter. And we are unable to provide that. So. Lloyd is an example, but I encourage all residents to apply to be a board member, to apply to be on a commission, to join your neighborhood organization. It's so important. Government in Santa Monica needs to be from the bottom up, not the top down. It is important to all of us that you participate. This is a participatory city. Please join in. Please make sure your voice is heard and it can be heard in a very positive way in Santa Monica. So let's reflect on 2023 and how the events of this past year will shape our future. And we'll also look forward to toward 2025, which is a very special year in Santa Monica, the celebration of our city's 150th birthday on July 14th, 2025. That's right, we'll be 150. And I don't even look that old. Uh, close, but not that old. As you probably know, 2024 is the leap year, and today is leap day. I'd like to view this bonus day that we get every four years 
as a time to pause and reflect, to set our intentions, focus on our goals, and take that leap toward a brighter future. So on this leap day, I want to showcase how we're working toward a Santa Monica at 150, where we all can thrive. If you know me, you probably know my love for the city is boundless. I grew up here. My mother grew up here and still lives here. My parents met at one of the Cannon and Palisades Park, walked through Ocean Park, shared ice cream, and fell in love here. I'll forever be grateful for the day my grandparents chose to move to Santa Monica 100 years ago. Because of them, I get to call this beautiful place home. I live and I breathe Santa Monica. I've walked every block and every alley of this city. I take pride in truly being embedded in the community I love. And by the way, more walks with Brock are coming. Please sign up when I post the notices so you can take walks with me around our city. There's a feeling you get when you're exploring this town, standing at the edge of the Pacific Ocean, viewing a glorious sunset in Palisades Park, taking a bike ride on our city's safe bike paths, and enjoying our neighborhood haunts. I call it the spirit of Santa Monica. It's a unique, distinct culture, a way of life and a beauty that's unmatched. You know, we often get caught up in the daily grind, focusing on the struggles we face as a community, rather than the beauty and vibrancy that is Santa Monica. As we start fresh in a new year, it's a great opportunity to refocus, to be grateful for the fact that we live and play in this wonderful place, and to recommit to working together to recapture the spirit of Santa Monica. It's an absolute honor and the privilege of my lifetime to serve as your mayor. I look forward to continuing to do this work together. Before I say anything more, let's pause for a moment to recognize the incredible city staff that make it all happen. They work tirelessly every day to serve each of you, our community members. They're diverse in background and ideas. They're intelligent and innovative. And above all, they truly care about this place we call home. They're one of the reasons our city is as great as it is. And every single person on the city staff is vital to our efforts serving each of you. I want to single out especially our blue collar staff for special recognition. Our plumbers, electricians, custodians, bus drivers, and mechanics, among others. Yes, please give them a hand. And our city staff have been through a lot these past few years. Have we worked through the pandemic and the economic challenges facing our city? Words can't do justice to the appreciation I have for their dedication to Santa Monica and each of you. Everything that we'll touch on tonight is a testament to the teamwork between staff and residents, city boards and commissions, and our city council. So I wanted to make sure we started with that recognition. Santa Monica has many milestones worth celebrating in our rich history. The first people arrived in the LA area more than 10,000 years ago, and they caused our first traffic jam. <laughs> the Gabrielino Tongva people settled at their sacred springs, taking advantage of the fruitful offerings and outstanding scenery surrounding them, flourishing and caring for the land for millennia. In 1789, explorers encountered them on what today is the University High School campus. Naming the area Santa Monica has been attributed to Father Juan Crespi, who was part of that expedition. He saw the drops of water from the springs and envisioned them as the tears of St. Monica. I want to take a moment to acknowledge that the land we stand on tonight is the ancestral home of the First Peoples, to honor the indigenous caretakers of this land and those who are still part of this community today. Our Santa Monica has gone through many eras and many inhabitants, but all shared a love for this place. Santa Monica's 150th anniversary, you're going to hear this from me a lot, arrives on July 14th, 2025. It celebrates when landowners Jones and Baker mapped out our modern city and sold the first plots of land. The date was July 14th, 1875. And we're forever grateful that Baker's wife, Arcadia Banditti, and her nephew, 
Juan Jose Carrillo made significant donations to the future of Santa Monica. You can thank Arcadia for Palisades Park and Juan for Woodlawn Cemetery. So from the first peoples to recent times, Santa Monica was born from the natural resources and beautiful open space that makes this city special. As a former parks commissioner, I've long embraced the importance of our open spaces to the spirit of Santa Monica. They remain critical to the soul of our community today. To my great delight, this past year saw a surge of fun community events that activated our parks and brought the community together again. I loved attending the monthly Locals Night filled with fantastic local music and arts and our historic 360 festival at the pier. Nearly 3,000 people participated in the third annual Americana in the Park Community Concert Series in Gadara Park. And this summer saw a new park concert series called Endless Summer Camp, which stands for Community, Art, Music, Picnic at Tongva Park. As part of the budget this year, the City Council formed the new City Department dedicated solely to providing amenities and enrichment to our community. The Recreation and Arts Department, affectionately called RAD, under Director General, oh, come on, you can clap better than that. <laughs> is dedicated solely to providing amenities and enrichment to our community. Under Director Jenny Rogers, who's here this evening. Jenny, where are you? Jenny, stand for a minute. She received, she received the ultimate co compliment last night. We have a Recreation and Parks Commissioner who doesn't compliment peace, people easily. And she, that commissioner came to City Council Tuesday night and stayed for three and a half, four, four hours just to say that Jenny Rogers is doing a great job in the city. I know Jenny was humbled. I was really proud of David White and staff who helped choose Jenny to come to our city. So thank you. And I can't wait to see what the talented team of seasonal and new staff accomplish in the coming year, building upon the great foundation already established in conjunction with our residents. There are so many projects and enhancements in the pipeline. We'll celebrate a new pickleball program. Yay for pickleball. <laughs> a universally accessible playground at Douglas Park and the two decades long wait to blend the old Fisher lumber yard into an improved Memorial Park. It's high time that there is simple historical signage in each and every city park that embraces the history of the park, and we will get that done this year. When you go to Douglas Park, I want you to know the history of the park as you go to our brand new playground. Make no mistake though, the people in this city need more open space. We must have significant green space within a 10 minute walk of every resident. Our work is not done. One more thing. Trees, yes, those green things that stick up into the sky. Our urban forest has been go going in the wrong direction, declining instead of increasing. I need your help, everyone's help. The city's urban forest team must plant trees in every empty tree well, and every Santa Monica must plant a tree in every yard in this city. It is our community struggle against climate change. We need to plant trees. We need to make sure we don't have heat islands and we make, need to make sure that those apartments and houses that never had air conditioning in Santa Monica because they never needed it, still won't need it because they have trees. Just, and you know, our lives really depend on it. Developers, we know the state has walked all over our zoning and the design standards, but at least, do me a favor, do all of us a favor. Plant copious amounts of trees in your new developments, damn it. If we're not allowed to alter your height and density, please give us trees and open space in every one of these new buildings. The health of our future residents depends on granting us this one wish. Lastly, residents, you need to petition the governor and the legislature to give us our city back so we have local control over our zoning, 
while still welcoming residents of diverse incomes into our city. We welcome new residents, but when we're having height and density that we can't control in our neighborhoods and on our streets, we need to make sure that our city and all cities in California have a chance to control our own destinies. And that needs to not be a wish. It needs to be a demand of your legislators, and it needs to be a demand of our governor. We need to be able to control how our city looks. And the big one. The Santa Monica Airport conversion project is getting underway, starting with a public outreach and engagement process beginning this spring. In line with the 2014 approved Measure LC, we'll be exploring the creation of extraordinary community open spaces on the airport land. SMO has been a key player in our city's history. In line with the, uh, sorry, the land was originally known as Clover Park, and the wise residents of Santa Monica voted for a parks bond in 1926 to fund a city park there. I see this transformation once the airport closes as a return of the original purpose of Clover Park, a great park in our city. I want to thank Acting Chief Operating Officer Amber Rashane and the fantastic team behind the airport transformation for their hard work getting us to this point. I encourage everyone to get involved, and I can't wait to see what our residents, our staff, our consultants, everyone dream up together to make sure that we have a wonderful park for the next centuries in Santa Monica. In 2023, we hosted the LA Opera simulcast at the iconic Santa Monica Pier, along with the second annual Ethos Film Awards across multiple venues. The American Film Market's six-day conference took place in our city for the 32nd time, seeing $1 billion in acquisition, financing, and licensing of independent films and products happening right here in Santa Monica. There are more than 3,000 Santa Monica businesses in the creative industries and technology sector employing nearly 31,000 people. That's more than a third of our city's total employment. We're home to a robust entertainment cohort. Lionsgate Entertainment, Hulu, Activision Blizzard, Skydance Media, and Snap, plus Universal Music Group, have all remained committed to staying in Santa Monica, many even expanding this year. Latino-owned and operated media company, Intravision, one of the country's largest, public country's largest public companies just completed a multi-million dollar investment in their Santa Monica corporate headquarters, including a state-of-the-art broadcast studio. I said countries, it's county's largest studios. I've had a passion for the arts since I was a young boy, starting in my first play at the historic Miles Playhouse at age 12. Now, I'm not gonna play you a recording of my play, um, but, my love for all types of artistic expression have only expanded from there. And there's no better place to nurture that passion than right here in Santa Monica. That's something that's extraordinary. We continue to invest in the arts, even after COVID, even after our financial difficulties. We know that throughout the world, a city that invests in arts is a city that will thrive. That's something not a lot of other cities can say. The Art of Recovery program was launched to harness the arts to help the, co the community's recovery and highlight Santa Monica as a place of culture and unique experiences. The program is still not only going strong, but it's growing and expanding. In 2023, we provided 105 arts grants to community artists and organizations totaling nearly $1 million. This includes $350,000 to 22 artists, arts producers, and community partners. We also launched the Art of Recovery microgrants program this year, creating new partnerships with Santa Monica communities, neighborhoods, and art producers. Our diverse public art collection remains a true gem that can be seen by all who stroll through our streets. One highlight from this year was our partnership with LACMA and SNAP to install a temporary virtual artwork by acclaimed artist Allison Saar next to the Inkwell Monument at the Bay Streets Beach area. 
I encourage all of you to participate in the city's new self-guided walking tour of public art. You can find the map on the city website. You won't be disappointed. And we're continuing to expand our already robust arts programs. I'm so thrilled to see the city continue to embrace and support artists through the Camera Obscura Art Lab Studio, residency and inaugural artist residency project at the city yards, new artist fellowships, and so much more. Taking it full circle, I look forward to see how we invigorate, reinvigorate, and reopen Miles Playhouse. Maybe you'll see me on stage there again one day. Uh, we hope not. In the spirit of activations, we're seeing world-class special events taking place at the world-famous Santa Monica Pier. We had the Independent Spirit Awards here this past Sunday. Tomorrow kicks off the LA Wine and Food Festival. And the world-famous Cirque du Soleil, yes, they're coming back. They'll perform by the pier again this fall. That's a great thing. And I'm extremely proud that Santa Monica has selected our very first Poet Laureate. Stay tuned for an exciting announcement very soon about the person selected. I love what we've done and I love what we're continuing to do, but we can do more. We are, by all measures, one of the most artistic cities in the world, a city of culture and arts, and I mean all the arts. We know that when the arts flourish, people thrive. We see the results of our school district's wonderful music programs in this city every day. How about those talented young musicians from John Adams we saw in the courtyard? But that's not enough. I want more public expressions of the arts in our city. How about playwrights showcasing their new plays and screenwriters taking a bow with their upcoming film and television projects? A great stage to showcase dance at its best. Local sculptors exhibiting their works on the Olympic Boulevard median. A permanent historic nod to Pacific Ocean Park on our beachfront. New diverse art in and around City Hall and music wafting through the air throughout our city. All this can be accomplished through robust public-private partnerships, which our city welcomes. Santa Monica continues to be a thriving hub for business, art, entertainment, innovation, wellness, technology, and most of all, an incubator for what's next. Now, we have work to do. Continue and invest in public safety is paramount. For Santa Monica to truly thrive, our businesses, visitors, and most of all, our residents must feel safe in our community. No one should feel fearful in Santa Monica. I believe that all mayors and city council members have one primary duty, to keep their residents as safe as possible. And that view, that vow, is made when each mayor and council member takes office in every hamlet, every village, town, and city throughout the world. I'm proud to see the progress we have made, and I pledge to do my utmost to continue the work of making Santa Monica as safe as it can be. In 2023, we welcomed 22 new police officers and the biggest fire recruit class in recent memory. We continue to push forward, and I have faith that our streets, parks, and businesses will be safer by the end of 2024. Right, Chief? Thank you, there we go. And our fire chief is here too, our brand, fire, stand up fire chief. Stand up police chief. But let's be frank, federal, state and county laws and practices in many cases have worked against the goal of keeping us safe. We all of us, you and I, must put in the work needed to make sure our wonderful city not only feels safe, but is safe. I want to proudly proclaim that I firmly support the professionalism and skilled response of our police and fire departments. I, I want to make sure, I make sure, to thank them whenever I cross their paths, and you should as well, because our police and our fire personnel run toward danger when we run away from peril. 
please give our police department, there's a veterans uh, young man over there. Over here. I, I can't tell you, and our police force knows this, and our fire department knows this, and our street pavers, and our custodians, and everyone else in the city, that I walk to them. Sometimes they look and say, who's this crazy white man walking toward us? And, and that's true. But the most important thing is I thank them. I thank them for serving the people of our city. I thank them not only for doing their job, but going beyond their job many times. Our efforts to address homelessness, including finding solutions to the mental health and substance abuse crises, pushes forward at full speed. We know we can't solve this crisis on our own. The epidemics of drug abuse and the mental health crisis affect so many of us who are housed. Imagine how they affect those who are living on our streets, regardless of the causes. I'm pushing each and every day along with our city manager, our city council, and our federal, state, and county partners to make sure that Santa Monica's voice is heard. Thank you, Assemblyman Zavur. I appreciate it. We all appreciate your leadership right now in Sacramento. <laughs> we must realize it's not compassionate to let people live and die on the streets of Santa Monica. You'll hear much more from our city manager about our initiatives in a few minutes. I know many of you are struggling to keep your businesses afloat, to have enough money to pay your rent, <coughs> or to feel safe taking your family to our parks. I feel your pain. The past four years have been tough. We lost restaurants and stores we loved, Our city landscape has changed. We have vacancies in our shopping districts. The impacts are quite real. Change can be challenging, but it can also bring great opportunity. I believe strongly that economic recovery is not coming. It's already here. We are recovering, Santa Monica. It's our chance to find a new favorite spot or rediscover an old beloved haunt a chance to encourage new businesses to come here and stay here, <coughs> a chance to enhance safety in our city by activating our public spaces and our business districts. And speaking of our future, why not involve the future leaders of our city? It is high time to start a youth advisory city council in our city. Come on now, you can applaud that. Let's get our youth involved. I want to hear their ideas. I don't want to wait until we're 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, or 80. I want them to participate now. I want them to be enthusiastic about government. I see our recovery when I walk and drive around our city. Santa Monica is open for business. We have a lot to look forward to. Odd One Out Taiwanese Milk Tea Shop, made famous at Smorgasbord LA, is opening a brick and mortar soon on the promenade. The site of the former Del Frisco's has already been snatched up by Brazilian, renowned Brazilian restaurant Fogo de Chile. A $25 million brand new retail building is great, great progress being built at 1404 Third Street and should bring some exciting tenants, new tenants to the promenade. The global animated phenomenon of Haibu, an environmentally conscious young heroine is coming to downtown to provide an interactive and family-friendly experience. And this is exciting. Rooftop Cinema is set to offer stellar ocean views, great movies under the stars atop parking structure sixth next year. There's tremendous investment happening in our city. That means something. Tourism continues to come back. More than a billion dollars is being invested into our local hotels. Wait, I want to repeat that. That's billion with a B. In particular, our, our iconic Ocean Avenue is having a renaissance, which our city manager will talk more about. 
Santa Monica's culinary scene also continues to innovate with dozens of new restaurants opening across our eight neighborhoods. Of note, the Surfing Fox, Bar Manette, and the Georgian restaurant have all landed on the Hollywood Reporter's Where to Dine Now list. And remember, Santa Monica is not just downtown. Stop at Ray's Diner, the Pico Barbershop, or Gilbert's El Indio on Pico. Yeah, especially Gilbert's. And that barbershop, I can't use them, but the people who do love them. Walk into Bob's Market or local on Ocean Park Boulevard. Stop by Kobe's or Chinois on Main Street. Walk into Father's Office, the Arrow Theater, or the Farms on Montana. Visit Bloodsodes or DK's on Santa Monica Boulevard. The streets of Santa Monica are home to the small businesses we all patronize and love. Please, really patronize them. Let's help them thrive so that more businesses open next door to them and more businesses. It's a phenomenon that grows. Patronize the local businesses here in Santa Monica, those local restaurants, all those. And you can tell I eat out a lot. So uh, make sure that you're really patronizing them. In May, our city will host events for the U.S. Travel Association's IPW, the largest industry event bringing top travel sellers and media to the Santa Monica Pier. And we look forward to our region playing host to some huge international events. The 2024 NCAA Division I Basketball West Regional Championship is in LA. The NBA, NBA All-Star Game and FIFA World Cup in 2026. The 2027 Super Bowl. And of course, we all look forward to seeing beach volleyball just north of the Santa Monica Pier on Santa Monica Beach broadcast worldwide. Again, Santa Monica is open for business, and we continue to build momentum. As I, as I used to say on Brock and Your Block, all the amazing things I've touched on tonight, dining, shopping, the arts, culture, sports, parks, events, business, tech, travel, and let's not forget the tireless volunteers of all of our service organizations in the city, the Lions, the Kiwanis, the Rotary, the Elks, all those clubs, the Breakfast Club, all those people who volunteer in our city to help make the city better, to help our children, to help our seniors, to help our veterans. Make sure you congratulate them and join those volunteer service organizations because they and all of us make up the fabric and thread of the colorful, diverse, historic quilt that is Santa Monica. My hope is, like me, you can see that we're on our way back. The promenade of downtown is cleaner and more bustling than it was a year ago. And when my time as mayor comes to an end, they will have made even greater strides. I'm listening. I hear you, I see you, I'm with you, I'm your advocate. We won't stop pushing forward in our economic growth and enhancing the cultural vitality of our community. We've reinvented ourselves in Santa Monica a hundred times in our long history as a city. This time is no different. We've suffered through a malaise of spirit, but that time I declare is over. I said earlier in this speech that we are a unique, distinct city with a rich heritage, that we are innovative, creative, and a hub within our region, and that Santa Monica has always punched higher and harder than our size. Santa Monica will prosper. Santa Monica will thrive. The spirit of Santa Monica is strong because it's stronger than all of us. The true spirit of Santa Monica is within each of us. 
And it is time for that spirit to shine once again. The motto on our city seal is fortunate people in a fortunate land. And we are. Thank you. Thank you so much for believing in our city. I'd now like to introduce our esteemed city manager, David White, to provide more details and in-depth updates about what we accomplished in 2023, what's in store for 2024 and beyond. David White, you get to take my place. I've absolutely kept that microphone warm for you. Thank you so much. To all of you, thank you. Continue to believe in Santa Monica. Contrary to what you hear, we're alive, we're well, and we're going to thrive. Thank you. David? <laughs> Good evening, Santa Monica, and thank you so much, Mayor Brock. Your enthusiasm for Santa Monica is infectious, and your love for this city is something that we absolutely share. This is my third State of the City address as your city manager, but my first speaking to you in person. This is a truly, truly, truly special moment. First, I want to take a moment to acknowledge our outstanding department head team. So I want to ask that they all please stand up. Assistant City Manager. <laughs> Assistant City Manager Susan Klein. Deputy City Manager Christopher Smith. Police Chief Ramon Batista. Our new Fire Chief Matt Halleck. City Attorney Doug Sloan. Acting City Clerk Nakima Newsom, Rent Control Administrator Jonathan Holub, Director of Community Development David Martin, Director of Finance Oscar Santiago, Director of Housing and Human Services Heather Averick, Director, so excuse me, Acting Director of Human Resources Olises Gordiev, Acting Chief Information Officer Sarkis Metzpakian, Director of Library Services Erica Cayugan, Director of Public Works Rick Valti, Director of Recreation and Arts, Jenny Rogers, and Director of Transportation, Anuj Gupta. <clears throat> These dedicated city leaders are the heartbeat of our city. They do a fantastic job supporting our workforce and moving projects forward. Our accomplishments are possible because of the dedicated, hardworking, thoughtful, creative, and caring people on our city team. Through all of the challenges and the changes, they have continued to show up for residents, workers, and visitors in our city. And it is because of them that I am so optimistic about our future. Again, please join me in a big round of applause for the incredible staff of the city of Santa Monica. I also want to acknowledge that the successes I'll be highlighting this evening would not be possible without the leadership of a tremendous city council. Thank you to all of them. Tonight is extremely meaningful to me because I get to report that after a really tough few years, our city is turning a corner. We have accomplished some truly wonderful and impactful things this past year, and there is so much more coming. Major investment is happening in Santa Monica, both in residential and commercial projects, which is a sign of confidence in our city. However, it will take some time for these investments to impact city revenues, and thus allow us to continue to restore services. As a result, we continue to work within a very constrained environment. And we simply are not at the point where we can do all that we want to as quickly as we want to. And as your city manager, nothing frustrates me more. 
but it's important to remember how far we have come. When I joined the city in 2021, the organization was in a fragile state. Staffing and services had been severely cut as the city revenues took a big hit from the pandemic. Amid the challenges of COVID, the city also settled numerous claims with victims of a former city employee, directing funds to survivors rather than to legal expenses. It was the right thing to do in the face of a terrible circumstance, but it had a big financial impact. Just last year, the city settled claims of approximately $122.5 million with 124 claimants, bringing the total to more than $200 million over two years. Fortunately, revenues are recovering. New tax measures approved by the voters, many of you here tonight, have allowed us to dedicate more resources to public safety, maintenance, and homelessness. We found ways to generate new revenue, such as an agreement with Big Outdoor to install and manage ad sales for digital wayfinding kiosks in commercial areas. As a result, the 2023-2025 budget adopted by this city council included the greatest level of restoration of city services since the pandemic. By making trade-offs and reallocating resources, we were able to restore library hours and more after-school programs, which I know are a high priority for our residents. Also, thank you to our finance department for continuing to do a stellar job throughout our financial challenges. Last year, the city was awarded the Certificate of Achievement for Excellence in Financial Reporting for the 39th year in a row. <laughs> through, through the budget adoption, Council established, established strategic priorities that guide everything we do. Our five priorities, addressing homelessness, clean and safe, sustainable and connected community, justice, equity and diversity, economic growth and cultural vitality, reflect Santa Monica's long-held values as well as our council's conviction to address critical but sometimes tough issues facing our community. I'm gonna start with addressing homelessness because I know it's top of mind for many. The city has a long, long history of enacting policies, programs, and services rooted in best practice to prevent and respond to homelessness. We have heard from many residents, businesses, and workers who express quality of life concerns. There is no doubt that this is a crisis impacting the state, our region, and our community that warrants significant attention. And we have been giving it just that. The adopted budget dedicates significant resources to programs, initiatives and partnerships to address homelessness. Measure CS has brought in about $5 million in transient occupancy tax funds, and soon Measure GS will direct new revenue to schools, increasing the supply of affordable housing and measures to prevent homelessness. With these new resources, we have been running at full speed, and the City Council has supported the following created the Housing and Human Services Department as our organization's focal point for administering a comprehensive array of housing, educational, and social services programs to support our most vulnerable residents. Funded and deployed a third multidisciplinary outreach team so that the entire city is covered. Increased the size of our police department to expand the Homeless Liaison Program Team, enhancing outreach efforts and collaboration across departments. Leverage county resources to bring forward a partnership between the police department and Salvation Army to help those experiencing homelessness and struggling with addiction. Allocated funds for the redesign of Samochelle Shelter to accommodate 24 seven intakes for referrals from first responders. No other communities doing this. Continued clean and safe programs in police, public works, code enforcement and parking, such as the host team, which I'll talk about in just a little bit. Also, last year, the city council declared a local emergency on homelessness, which has proven critical 
in streamlining hiring for key staff positions, removing barriers to building affordable housing, and advocating for regional resources. We have already seen three big initiatives launched this year. First, in January, the city launched a therapeutic transport pilot program in partnership with the LA County Department of Mental Health that allows for more targeted and tailored responses to 911 and non-emergency calls focused on behavioral health, while also expanding first responders' capacity to address other emergency calls. Second, we launched the Shelter, Treatment, and Empowerment Program known as Step Court. Step Court is a community-based, prosecutor-led collaborative diversion court that focuses on resources rather than criminalization. Thank you to Chief Deputy City Attorney Jenna Grigs Grigsby for making Step Court a reality. And third, just this month, we participated in a partnership with the LA County Homeless Initiative's Pathway Home Program. As a result of this operation, 25 people experiencing homelessness in our community have moved into interim housing, where they're receiving an array of services to be connected to permanent housing. Much of the work to, to address homelessness lives with the Housing and Human Services team under the instrumental leadership of Satara Yavari, this small but mighty team has helped move many of these initiatives forward. But success in addressing homelessness involves every single one of our departments. For example, the police department runs the Homeless Liaison Program team under the incredible leadership of Sergeant Carlos Hayen. In 2023, the hardworking members of the health team responded to nearly 3,500 requests for, services, for service and addressed nearly 400 encampments. The fire department established a new emergency medical services division, which includes oversight of homelessness related matters and responded to approximately 3,000 calls just last year. The department also entered into a partnership with Wise and Healthy Aging for a pilot program to assist heavy users of emergency services. A care coordinator has worked with eight clients to provide them services and equipment such as devices to prevent falls at home and arrange relocation to assisted living facilities. This program is just one part of our work to prevent house Santa Monicans from becoming homeless, while also increasing the supply of affordable housing, addressing behavioral health needs of vulnerable individuals, and advocating for regional resources. In 2023 alone, city multidisciplinary outreach teams made more than eight thousand contacts. 229 people experiencing homelessness transitioned into interim or permanent housing or were reunited with family through Project Homecoming. And 1,416 community members received services to prevent eviction and homelessness. A huge thank you to the Santa Monica Housing Authority staff who provided rental housing assistance to 1,000 677 households through federally funded voucher programs in 2023. Last year, the city distributed more than $10 million in grant funding to 18 local social service agencies. And we continue to provide basic income assistance to 206 senior households through the Preserving Our Diversity or POD program. Creating and sustaining affordable housing is the most critical means for addressing homelessness. And I'm proud to share that several city-funded affordable housing buildings have opened recently, contributing more than 150 apartments to the city's affordable housing supply. And 221 affordable units are currently under construction, including the 57 city-funded permanent supportive housing units at the Laurel. The Community Development Department has initiated negotiations with the developer AMCAL for an affordable housing project adjacent to the 4th Street Expo Station. It is one of many city properties we've earmarked for affordable housing. In addition, we've updated zoning to remove barriers to housing production, including updating affordable housing requirements, allowing new housing in previously non-residential zones, encouraging the development of moderate income housing, and incentivizing accessory dwelling units. 
Not only are our efforts paying off, but they're being recognized. Just this month, Santa Monica received the pro-housing designation from Governor Newsom, recognizing our work. <laughs> recognizing our work, reducing barriers to construction, lowering costs, and creating, creating housing policies aligned with state goals. And I will add that Santa Monica has received the most points, the most points of any jurisdiction that has received this distinction. <clears throat> this is a huge honor and achievement, and Jean Yao, Roxanne Tanamori, Roxanne Fer Ross Furman, David Martin, and everyone in planning deserves big congratulations for their work. As we move forward in addressing homelessness and, and addressing the housing crisis, the city is in the process of putting together a strategic plan to guide our work on this key priority over the next five years. I wanna thank Alia Buttar and Ashay Stevenson for their leadership in bringing this plan forward. Our next priority is clean and safe, or as the mayor would like me to say, safe and clean. We strive to maintain an atmosphere in Santa Monica marked by clean and safe public spaces and neighborhoods, including parks for recreation and leisure. Again, it's an interdepartmental effort. The Santa Monica Police Department responded to 103,462 calls for service last year, including 820 priority zero calls, which are for life-threatening emergencies with an average response time of less than five minutes. And despite an extremely challenging labor market, as you heard, we hired 22 new officers last year. And staffing levels in the police department are now at the highest level since I joined the city. I wanna thank Police Chief Ramon Batista, his leadership team, and the entire department for their work to address crime before it occurs. In 2023, the department's proactive work resulted in a 12% increase in arrests. Overall calls for service decreased and officer-initiated responses have increased. Police, police and code enforcement continue to partner through the Directed Action Response Team, or DART, and have significantly improved the experience and safety for all downtown, on the pier, and on the beach. In 2023, the team addressed more than 400 encampments, made over 200 arrests, and advised or cited another 729 individuals. And a big thank you to Neighborhood Resource Officer Stephen Hollowell, who's been a go-to for every single issue in downtown. And Lieutenant... <laughs> you got one more guy to clap for. And Lieutenant Jerry Leva who oversees our downtown services unit. I appreciate their commitment, care, and focus so very much. Heading into the next few years, safety in our city continues to progress with a focus on strengthening our efforts through technology. Our police department received a $6.2 million grant from the state last year to develop the Santa Monica Analytical Real-Time or Smart Center. This real-time crime center will bring together technology and support staff to strategically allocate police resources to better address crime. The fire department has also had a very, very busy year. In addition to responding to 19,000 calls for service and successfully adding 13 recruits to the fire academy last month, the department has shown an incredible willingness and ability to evaluate, pivot, and deliver value-added services, and I couldn't be more grateful. The fire department also opened a new state-of-the-art training center and completed a five-year strategic plan that creates a roadmap for the future. Public Works also plays an integral role in keeping Santa Monica clean and safe. Department teams responded to 5,070 graffiti removal requests last year and picked up 180 million pounds of waste. There are new teams dedicated to addressing bulky items and illegal dumping throughout our city, and we are launching a new neighborhood cleanup program. 
Kudos to equipment operator John Ramirez and resource recovery and recycling manager Yvonne Young for their work on these efforts. And a new public works team dedicated to cleaning up encampments has hit the ground running. In just the first three months of this pilot, the homeless support team, or HOST, cleaned up more than 400 locations and disposed of 55 tons of trash and debris. The Community Development Department has begun enforcing new ordinances on property maintenance and vacant property standards to improve the safety and aesthetics of these properties and discourage landlords from leaving their properties vacant for extended periods of time. And, a, <laughs> and under the leadership of Building and Safety Division Manager Ario Sakaris and his team, the department also continued to implement our seismic retrofit program to ensure the buildings and homes in our city are structurally sound. Earthquakes aren't the only natural disaster that could threaten our community safety. I'm proud of the collaborative and coordinated work of city teams in the face of every emergency, led by the strong leadership of our Office of Emergency Management. Our dispatchers and first responders are on call 24 seven, and they answered more than 200,000 911 and non-emergency calls and texts in 2023. Safety isn't just about responses to incidents. It's also about prevention. Last year, the Department of Transportation and Public Works completed phase one of safety enhancements on Wisher Boulevard, pedestrian enhancements on Pico Boulevard, and streetscape improvements on Fort Street. They also upgraded 10 intersections in the city to all-way stops, with more to come in 2024 as we work towards Vision Zero. And I would be remiss if I didn't mention that our community is extremely active in bringing issues to our attention, often through the 311 system. Our 311 team works hard to route and follow up on these requests, as well as answer questions from the community. Thank you very much to the team. <clears throat> Climate change is one of the most severe threats facing our planet and our community. Our next priority, sustainable and connected, ensures that city policies and programs enhance our natural resources, prevent harm to the environment and human health, and benefit the social and economic well being of the community for the sake of current and future generations. This year marks the 30th anniversary of Santa Monica's Sustainable City Plan. And ahead of its time guide that maps out our vision to achieve water self-sufficiency, zero waste, and carbon neutrality, we take very seriously our responsibility to protect our environment for generations to come. But it's much more than that. Businesses, residents, and visitors intentionally choose to come here because of our commitment to these values. We lead the way with our multimodal roadways, robust and accessible transit system, bike and pedestrian safety infrastructure and EV facilities, all of which make it easier to get around town without a vehicle. Our city now has 120 lane miles of bikeways that encourage green commuters. And 17th Street from Pico to Wilshire is a welcome addition. As an avid biker myself, I'm all in, and I so very much appreciate it. The city's big blue bus system provided 8.1 million rides in 2023, a 14% increase over 2022. BBB's 19 battery electric buses traveled a total of 284,704 miles last year. And we're looking to add 65 more of these cleaner, greener buses in the next few years. A big shout out to BBB staff for the impressive brighter blue study they are conducting to enhance the city's transit network. I encourage everyone to take the online community survey and attend upcoming workshops on March 6th and March 7th. Mode, our demand response transportation service for seniors and people with disabilities provided nearly 40,000 rides in 2023, up 25%. 
And we look forward to launching a new e-bike voucher program for low-income families and continuing to make transit and mobility programs accessible to all. Because of our longstanding commitment to climate resiliency, we've achieved a 48% reduction in our carbon emissions since 1990. And we are well, we are well on our way to our goal of an 80% reduction by 2030. We did that with action and we're committed to furthering that work. Last year, we brought forward a zero emission building code requiring all new buildings to be fully electric, along with an electrification roadmap for existing buildings. And we're looking at a low carbon concrete policy to take to city council just next month. The resource recovery and recycling team continues to roll out the state, manda state mandated organics recycling program. In 2023, we collected 28 million pounds of organics, diverting these materials from landfills to be used for compost and renewable energy. That's a 14% increase from the previous year. <clears throat> in 2022, we cut the ribbon on the Sustainable Water Infrastructure Project, or SWIP. The innovative stormwater capture system came online last year and has gained national and statewide recognition. Santa Monica leads. I'm thrilled that Water Resources Manager Sonny Wang and his team are getting this much deserved recognition for their groundbreaking work. SWIP captured 20 million gallons of stormwater in 2023, and amid a wet February, we've already captured more than 5 million gallons this year, helping replenish our groundwater supplies for drier times. And I know I saw Shannon earlier. After a successful first pilot, the Office of Sustainability and the Environment started work with the Santa Monica Bay Foundation on phase two of the Beach Dune Restoration Project. And our farmers markets continue to be among the best in the region, encouraging local produce sales, supporting sustainable food systems, and providing access to healthy food. We are making big strides to being a more resilient city, well positioning us to face current and future climate challenges. Our next priority is justice, equity, and diversity. Council took a big step last year in adding this priority, acknowledging the racial injustice and discrimination that has occurred in our city throughout its history. We are dedicating resources and a city team to shine a light on these difficult issues and pursue initiatives to rectify the lingering consequences of discriminatory policies. Equity for us means that as a city, we give everyone what they need to thrive based on an understanding that different people start in different places due to historical and current injustices. Equity is about equal outcomes for all. We infuse equity into all that we do and there are examples of this equity infused work, equity focused work across all city departments. Our small but mighty DEI team led by Lisa Parson has added internal programs and community initiatives that advance racial equity and social diversity to improve the well-being of people who live, work, play, and do business in our city. This includes providing trainings to city staff on implicit bias and interrupting microaggressions, evolving old approaches to more inclusive ways of working, such as ensuring that language is not a barrier to participating in civic processes, ensuring people of all identities feel welcome here through gender identity inclusion, and taking a serious look at how we can welcome more diverse partners in the business of the city by updating our approach to equity in contracts and procurement. This past year, we launched a collaborative process to create a citywide equity plan seeking input from staff, local leaders, and underrepresented communities. Once adopted by the council, this plan will provide us with a roadmap to guide policies 
and conversations around racial equity and includes the creation of a community advisory body. The team will return to the community to co-generate solutions to key issues at a workshop coming up on March 2nd. That's just in a couple of days. And I hope you will all join them there to contribute your ideas. I also encourage you to apply for a grant to host your own feedback sessions on this important plan. Santa Monica Public Library has long understood that different groups in our community have different needs and that equity means providing support to those who need just a little more. The Literacy Education for Adults and Families, or LEAF program, serves many of our vulnerable patrons, helping them with reading, writing, and literacy skills. Highlights from this year include reestablishing drop-in computer and tech skills programs, expanding literacy volunteer hours of service, and winning a grant to implement English as a Second Language services. A big thank you to the LEAF team, Nancy Bender, Barbara Fleeman, Tara Crow, and Andre Leva. There are many other important equity initiatives we implemented last year. The Department of Transportation helped more than 400 vulnerable Santa Monicans apply for reduced fare, fixed rate, and on-demand transportation services. We implemented the Santa Monica Farmers Market's Market Match Redemption Program at the Main Street Farmers Market and expanded it to Pico. The city council adopted a gender neutral public restroom ordinance. A big thank you to project manager Linda Cogswell for her leadership in our work to retrofit restrooms in city parks for inclusive use by all in our community. Our cultural affairs team conducted a thorough and thoughtful community engagement process regarding the Stanton McDonald Wright mural in historic city hall in partnership with Indigenous-based arts and culture collaborative, Metzli Projects. The City Council affirmed 10 recommendations this month, and I'm eager to see how the Reframe City Hall Mural Project progresses from here. The City received a perfect score on the Human Rights Campaign's Municipal Equality Index for LGBTQ plus inclusion for the fifth time last year. For our inclusive municipal laws, policies, and services for LGBTQ plus people in our community. Since 2019, the city has partnered with Downtown Santa Monica, Santa Monica Travel and Tourism, the Santa Monica Pier, and Santa Monica Place to produce Samo Pride, a month-long celebration. And I want to recognize Deputy City Manager Christopher Smith for serving as our LGBTQ liaison and advancing this so very important work. In addition to SAMO Pride, we saw a host of celebrations, book clubs, educational experiences, and family activities honoring Asian American and Pacific Islander Heritage Month, Hispanic Heritage Month, Native American Heritage Month, and this month, Black History Month. Thank you to the city staff, community volunteers, and city affinity groups who volunteer their time to make these events happen. I'll conclude tonight with a strategic priority that to me is enhanced by all of our other priorities, economic growth and cultural vitality. Mayor Brock detailed, some, Mayor Brock detailed Santa Monica's cultural vitality so well I'm not even gonna to try to touch that one. But I do wanna talk for a moment about the city's economic growth. Santa Monica has made great progress cultivating economic opportunity and recovery, as well as investing in amenities and programs for all community members. In the Community Development Department, we saw tremendous work, supported and led by the council to make it easier for businesses to open and thrive in our city. New ordinances and policies encourage a more active nightlife and entertainment presence downtown. And expedited staff approvals for new types of businesses allow for a greater diversity of businesses on the promenade and less red tape to further economic recovery. <clears throat> I 
Nearly 50 restaurants, bars, and food service businesses have opened citywide. And here's some examples of what just recently opened. John Reed Fitness, Nike, which recently completed a multi-million dollar renovation, Pickle Pop, more Pickleball, Wilson Sporting Goods, Aldo, Fred Siegel is back, Sonio Toscano, Swish Studios, and the long lines at Layla Bagels. And coming soon, I hope Ann Bowman is still here. Barnes & Noble's coming back to the promenade. I'll give you credit, I'll give you credit. Aja Vineyards Wine Tasting, Pacific Catch, Arte Museum, Din Tai Fung, and Club Studio Fitness. And on top of shopping and dining, we continue to be the sought after home for tech, health, and entertainment industries. And she's still here. Thank you to our economic development manager, Jennifer Taylor, for your tireless work in this arena. The first six months of 2023 were an exciting time for hotels in Santa Monica. Thank you, Misty. I want to. I want to. <laughs> I want to call out a number the mayor mentioned because it really is astounding. We are seeing a billion dollars in investment in existing properties and new projects. A billion dollars. Early last year, the Pierside Hotel, formerly the Wyndham Hotel, and the Sanborn, formerly Le Marigot, underwent extensive renovations and are more stunning than ever. The famous Georgian Hotel, AKA the First Lady of Santa Monica, known for its 1940s old Hollywood glamor, completed an amazing refurbishment. The power of preservation. Its reopening prompted an article in Vogue titled, with the return of the Georgian Hotel, Santa Monica is getting its groove back. We also eagerly anticipate Regent Hotels and Resorts on the site of the former Lowe's Hotel, making its American premiere with the Beachside Hotel near the pier. And we're not the only ones looking forward to this. The Forbes Travel Guide named this one one of the most anticipated hotel openings in the world. The exciting Frank Geary Design Hotel project on Ocean Avenue and the reimagining of the Fairmont Miramar are moving forward, and I hope to see them breaking ground in the near future. Not only do these projects provide much needed revenue to support city operations and community programs, we have also leveraged them with development agreements that bring affordable housing, public amenities, and other enrichment to Santa Monica residents and business owners. And we continue to see residential development coming to Santa Monica. Several mixed use housing projects are under construction or in planning throughout our commercial areas, including a project at Lincoln and Broadway that will include a new Vaughn's grocery store and 260 apartments. The amount of private investment we're seeing reinforces our city efforts and shows public private partnerships continue to bolster our economic recovery. So if you've been paying attention for the past 30 minutes or so, thank you. <laughs> that actually wasn't supposed to be a joke, but I, <laughs> I get it. I would like to end this evening with a quote that provides additional meaning to this evening and some gratitude. So to my team, wherever they are, bear with me. I'm going off script, and they knew it was going to happen at some point. Helen Keller once said, alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Alone, we can do so little. Together, we can do so much. Santa Monica thrives because of your input and engagement and the collective efforts of so many individuals that tirelessly work for the city of Santa Monica. I am grateful and extremely optimistic, extremely optimistic about the future of our city. We have shown that we can weather the most difficult storms and still remain true to our city's values and ethos. Santa Monica continues to be a place that people feel lucky to be a part of. 
So let me give some thanks. Thank you, thank you, thank you for being here tonight. Thank you to the City Council, Mayor Phil Brock, Vice Mayor Lana Negretti, Council Member Gleam Davis, Council Member Oscar De La Torre, Council Member Christine Pata, Council Member Carolyn Tarosis, and Council Member Jesse Zwick. You keep me grounded and focused on what matters most to this community. Thank you to our amazing city team. And thank you, Dr. Shelton, to the Santa Monica Malibu Unified School District and to tonight's youth performers and all who had a part in making this year's State of the City a great success. For me, that includes our amazing Office of Communications, Lauren Hallen, Tati Simonian, Melinda Espinoza, Hannah Monroy Matas, Marcus Tad Williams, and Jordan Ellis, and members of our city manager's office, Gilbert Portillo, Alyssa Gonzalez, and if you're still here, Josh, Josh Kirpies. We could not have done it without you. So please, everyone, join me in a round, warm round of applause for their tremendous work. I look forward to standing here a year from now and talking about all the wonderful things that we accomplished together in 2024. Thank you so much for being this here this evening and good night. <laughs>